Hey, what's up guys? Out in the shop, it's a Saturday evening, getting kind of late here, but I'm building a bunk bed, and I hate building bunk beds. But anyways, I was recently going through my direct messages, and I had shown some stories on Instagram about what I had going on here, and I've been doing a ton of miter folding um, for some beam components for this bunk bed, as well as some posts, and I got a few messages where guys were surprised that I wasn't using a lock miter on these pieces and was instead using a miter fold. So I thought, I've actually got that question quite a few times before, so I wanted to do a video addressing that topic and then kind of show you what I got going on with constructing this bunk bed. I might even try and put it together quick in the shop just to test fit it. As you can see here, I've got a bunch of these pieces of, I guess I'd call them beams or posts, whatever. I've got horizontal rails that'll support the two sections of bunk bed. And then here, I've got some four by four posts that I made. And uh, I, I used a miter fold technique on all of these. No lock miter, there's no nails in any of these is just strictly tape and glue for the assembly. Um, this here is a piece that I just glued up a little bit ago and you'll see on it, you can see the tape here. So essentially you just lay your pieces flat on the table, you tape the top, you flip it all over, glue the insides of the miters and then you just fold it up. So that's why they call it a miter fold. It works really well. So let's talk about some of the differences on why you wouldn't want to use a lock miter or why you would want to use a miter fold whenever you're building something like this. First, let me say, don't get caught up in the notion that you need to go out and spend thousands of dollars on a shaper with a lock miter bit to do quality work. All of this miter folded stuff is actually better quality than what I would get trying to miter or trying to lock miter on the shaper. And there's one reason for that, and there's one key advantage I look for whenever I'm going to miter fold something versus lock miter something, and that is how straight is the material. And in this case, you see all these beams are made out of plywood, which immediately tells me that my material is going to be flat and then whenever I put the um, 45 and a half degree cut uh, for the long miter I use a track saw on one edge so I ensure that one edge is going to be perfectly straight and then I do the other miter on the opposing side of the piece on the table saw and what that is going to do is it's going to ensure that all of my pieces are going to be the exact same width the way I want them. So like whenever I was making all these pieces, it was important to me that all those pieces come out the same width because these pieces need to match my posts. And if I was trying to miter both edges, say I was trying to miter this edge and this edge with a track saw, it would have been really hard to keep the same width. So in this case, I used my track saw to rip one edge so that it would be perfectly straight and then I did the other edge on a table saw so that I could ensure using the table saw fence I'd have the exact same width. I'm going to turn you around here and show you the quality. So here you can see how I folded it. There you see the miter. I do it at 45 and a half degrees so the, the heel is going to be open a little bit more and then my outside edge is going to be perfectly tight by um, increasing your angle to 45 and a half degrees. If you would have went a true 45 the glue would have caused things to want to separate a little bit and you might not have got a real tight joint on this outside edge. Of course, um, before I sand things looking for a round bit of some kind you just take something like this and burnish the edge and that kind of smashes the fibers on the edge and then you hit it with some sandpaper and it's going to make it perfectly tight like that. 
the primary reason that sometimes if you follow my work closely on Instagram or some of YouTube, the videos I've done, primary reason I use the shaper for beams is because with that really long one by material for beams, you're gonna have boards that have cups, crowns, and, and really just sharp um, humps and dips in the board sometimes. And with what I'm doing with beams a lot of times, that freeborn lock miter bit works really well for that type of material and allows me to assemble the beams um, without exposed fasteners, which is important when I'm distressing them or on a high-end job where I have stained beams and I don't want a bunch of nail holes. It works well for that. So that's kind of my reasoning on why I like to use a miter fold versus a lock miter. I'll tell you that uh, learning the skills to use a miter fold is 10 times more important than using a lock miter because a miter fold is way more applicable um, on the job site and in the shop and it requires no overhead. All you need is um, clear tape to do a miter fold and some skill in kind of knowing how to work with your material and you can get great results like this. So. I thought this would be kind of an interesting video. So I've got my posts done. I made a bunch of uh, mortises, as you can see here with my domino. And then those will all receive into the ends of these horizontal supports. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and put that together now and see how it goes. Wish me luck. Um, and I was going to show you the design also. So I draw this up in Google SketchUp and then use the layout extension to export this to a PDF. But this is kind of the look of what it's going to be finished as in the, uh, the house I'll be trimming in a month or so. folds on this one so as you can see very crisp lines on these posts really nice tight miters no exposed fasteners on the edges all this was just tape and glue so it's ready for paint um, this isn't squeezed tight yet I've just got it kind of pressure fit in here with dominoes and I just threw some clamps on the bottom um, but yeah, you, if you can learn to miter fold well, you can really get some nice crisp work. Um, show you what I use over here for tape. Um, I've tried a lot of different tapes. The biggest, and it's not in here. The biggest thing I usually try to go for is the heavy duty tape. I, I feel like that's the most important thing over here is my gun that i use and then just use a gun like this it works really well it finishes out like this so then after your glue dries 
You can just peel your tape back, pull the tape off, and that is what you're left with along there. Really nice tight miters. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you don't follow on Instagram, you can follow on Instagram. I do a lot more of the uh, daily routine type stuff and you'll see more projects like this that I don't necessarily make YouTube videos about, but uh, check, that out if, check that out if you aren't following along there. Um, if you ever have questions or comments, um, I do try and read all my comments and um, direct messages on Instagram and that's where I get a lot of my ideas for videos. So like a video like this was just a spur of the moment idea because I had several comments all related to, hey, why didn't you use a lock miter bit in your corners versus uh, miter folding with tape? So we answered that question now. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe as always and uh, appreciate that and all the support.